everyone, this is Julia from uh, Adventure Geek. Just to let you know, today I'm going to be talking about my sleep routine when you get to an alberga. Now, there's some good things and some bad things I'm going to share with you, so be tuned. That's Poppy. Okay, so actually I'm going to go... Oh my Oh, what needs? I think it's probably easier because I'm going to get some stuff out of my pack. By the way, let me introduce you to Nelly. So this is Nelly, and it's my um, Osprey pack. In fact, if I can remember rightly, it's a Aura 50 litre AG. So if you wanted to know what it was, then that's what it is. Uh, and I use it. Um, it's, it's brilliant fit. It's actually made for women, so I love it. I also collect these neat little badges. Let me show you. They go on the top of my pack. Okay, for those ultralight people, you will be frowning at that, but hey ho, I like to add a bit of personality to my pack and to my things, as you perhaps saw in last week's video. Okay, so when you get to an alberga or a hostel of some kind, the first thing you need to do is actually pick where you're going to stay, unless you know you get allocated a bed. So learn from my mistakes. The first mistake I would say is that uh, never, ever, ever um, pick a bunk or pick a um, pick a bed that's next to the bathroom for two reasons. First reason is because um, there are, how should we put it, there are some funny noises that may happen during the night that certainly wake you up. Um, when we stayed at the uh, Orison on the first, uh, first, very first night of the Camino, there was this German guy who had some let's just say some problems so he had diarrhea and to be honest with you it kept me awake half the night as he kept getting out of his bunk going to the bathroom my bed was right next door to the bathroom so uh, that was not the, a pleasant experience especially for my first night ever hosteling uh, or properly properly hosteling so that wasn't good and the second reason is obviously people turn the lights on and off when you're next to uh, the bathroom and again that's something else that wakes you up so even if you've got your earplugs in so you don't hear the noises uh, sometimes you know the light will wake you up so pick a bed far away from the bathroom okay so I'm gonna go through my pack um, the good thing about this particular pack is it has a compartment right in the bottom of it which just zips open which I absolutely love so I put everything to do with sleeping in the bottom of my pack so I'm going to show you now what's in here this is what I do as soon as I get to the alberga. Okay, so I've got four things. Um, okay, so the first thing is this. Okay, so when, if you're going anywhere sort of fairly hot, so doing something like Spain, that, that tends to work quite well. Um, I have just a sleeping bag liner. The very first time I came on the Camino, um, I took with me a lightweight sleeping bag, which is absolutely fine. Um, but I don't know about you, but I'm not keen on sleeping bags um, because I like to, you know, if you, especially if it gets hot, you like to stick your leg out the side or, or whatever, you know? Um, but I don't, I don't, I'm not that keen on sleeping bags. Uh, the sleeping bag I've got actually turns into a quilt, which actually works quite well. Okay, so let me show you why I like this one. The weight of this is really quite light. Um, it's called a, a Dimples XL and it's only 237 grams, which is uh, about just under eight and a half ounces. So it's really, really lightweight. Uh, and I'll show you the reason I like it. Let me just get this out. I've got fleas there, mate. Okay, so it's like a silk. So if I can show you what this is like, it's like a really nice quality silk. Okay, so if I put it out. Okay. Okay, as you can see, it's actually really quite wide. Um, I love the width of this. Um, and it's what they call an envelope one rather than a mummy one that uh, tapers at the end. So it's like, it's quite nice and wide. Uh, the last time I went on the uh, Camino, especially in hostels, it can be prone to bed bugs. So bed bugs, uh, uh, one of my friends actually got bed bugs. She got bitten all over. Luckily we didn't. I had a bed bug sheet, but the sheets just didn't fit the whole of the bed. It was just, 
uh, just like you know a little section of it so uh, you didn't really feel protected whereas something like a, a sleep bag sleeping bag liner or a sleep sheet that's what they call them um, just works wonders okay so this is really really comfortable it feels uh, light luxury it's really nice and um, the best thing I like about it it is a house when you get inside it has I don't know if you can see here like a pillow section so if I take just a cushion and you can put it inside now it's actually let's bring this down a bit the pillow section is really quite large um, so I didn't realize this but a lot of um, places that are outside the UK especially hostels they tend to have really long pillows uh, my good friend Julie she always takes a pillowcase with her and I think that's a cracking idea but if you've got one of these not only does it protect you from bed bugs um, but it's got a built-in pillowcase as well um, and it's just you can just whiz it in the in the wash the other thing I like about it is that you can put anything sort of inside it uh, so you sort of tucks away inside the pillowcase if you're just nipping out somewhere it sort of hides it away which is quite nice as well okay so that's my first thing is my sleep sheet um, if the weather is slightly colder I will take my uh, sleeping bag as well and just lay that over the top um, as a quilt so that's the first thing okay next thing I wanted to show you is my system for bed stuff so Someone said on the Camino forum last night, you know, what about nightwear? Do you take your gym jams with you? Uh, and, you know, if you're backpacking, your weight is really essential. So the answer to that one is no. So I have everything in a stuff sack because if for any reason it gets it's raining, I don't want my clothes to get wet. Uh, believe you me, I've, I've actually bought hundreds of stuff, uh, not stuff sacks, like dry sacks. Um, and these are the best ones. So these dry sacks, I got them from Go Outdoors, but they're lightweight. Some of them are really thick and they're quite heavy. Um, so these ones are from uh, Xbed. Okay, and they're different colors as well. So different size ones. So the small ones are green, or orange ones, and you get red ones as well. I'm not sure if you get blue ones. I haven't got any blue ones, so I've just got these three. Okay. So this is a neat little trick that my daughter showed me. So you can roll your, if I unroll this, this is the other bits and bobs I do have in my pack. So I unfold it. If you put your socks um, actually on the outside, then when you roll it up, you take the, oh actually I'll, I'll probably do a separate video on how to pack, but this is good even if you're just going on holiday, it's a good little trick. Okay, so I always have a nice pair of cotton socks uh, for sleeping in. Um, I, I have to sleep with my socks on. Don't know why, but I do. So, nice pair of socks there. I've got um, some really sort of lightweight. Uh, it's just like a base layer, but I just use those for sleeping in. Uh, very attractive, I know. And a base layer uh, top, which keeps me hot uh, in the winter and nice and cool in the summer i have a little laundry bag to collect my dirty laundry so when i take my clothes off i've been out of shower take my clothes off all the dirty stuff goes in there and that just gets packed in the bottom of my rucksack so i know where it is and a good old micro towel for when i have my shower so um, i prefer the towel in sort rather than those um micro fleeces that send to just distribute the water all over everyone raves about them but for me it's just like you know you, you wash it and you're just like moving the water around your body so lying like a proper towel and um, it's got a nice toweling feel to it but they're still microfiber and they just dry really really quickly i think i just got that from go outdoors so that's that one next thing is i have a sea to summit uh travel bag this actually was quite expensive. I think it was about 20 quid just for a wash bag. Um, but I've had no regrets at all. It's really durable. Um, it's got a, a pocket on the back. So you can just open up, pocket on the back. So when I go for a shower, I just pop my phone in there because at the end of the day, you know, I don't want to leave my phone back in the room. Uh, so I like that. If you open up the This one also has a little hook inside, so you can hook it on the inside of the, or just over the shower, over the top of the shower. Uh, so it's really good. It's got um, three compartments 
it did have a mirror in there as well, but I took the mirror out because most hostels that I'm staying in also have a mirror. Uh, and you can just do the you know, selfie side of things, so weight and all that. I was a bit weight conscious last time, so I just took, uh, took that mirror out. Um, when it comes to actually washing, so the only thing I, I did buy, and Mandy, I said you'd, I'd have something girly, it is a Lush soap shampoo bar. Um, so they do all sorts of, I was going to say flavours then, but all sorts of scents. Um, so I've got a, a honey one, it's a round one. I'd recommend getting a, don't get the round tin if you are buying these. They're shampoo bars, but you can shampoo your body, you can shampoo your hair, uh, and also you can wash your clothes in it, and it's, it just makes things smell really nice. Um, a whole Lush, I haven't, I've reused all of mine now, so I haven't got one in here, uh, but a whole Lush shampoo, oh, I thought I hadn't got one in there. Ah, okay, I've got a little bit left. Mine's the honey one, don't know if you can see that. Um, whew, I can smell that from here. Um, so, yeah, they will probably last you about eight weeks or so. Um, so if you're going on a fairly longish trip, you know, these are really good. I'm not going to go through everything that's in my travel bag. I'm sure you don't really want to know what I travel with. Uh, but this is a Sea to Summit one. Rachel's got one of these as well, so I've bought one for us both. Okay, so the other thing, when I get to the hostel, I just take out this bag, which is like a, a ditty bag, so she's got like my electronics in, because you know you want to make the most of the electricity points. So as I mentioned last week, there's some of my electronics. I'll show you these. First thing is, I plug in my USB adapter that's got four, four USB plugs, um, and I get my power pack all charged up. Usually, this is this will only needs charging sort of once every three or four days, but it's really cool. And this actually um, charges my Apple Watch at the same time. Has my iPhone. Uh, if I have to, I charge up my printer. One of the best tips, the other thing in this bag is a really long cable for my iPhone that goes into the socket. Because if you're on a top bunk, you know, you have to leave it on the floor charged, that means you can't do anything. And the first thing that you really want to do is update your Facebook status or whatever and use your phone when you're lying in bed. So having a long cord is something that I'd highly recommend. Um, I have a little torch, not all of the hostels have so this just attaches to my journal, it's like a little bed, a little like book light. And this gadget, I didn't show anyone last week, but let me just come up and I'll show you a little bit more. Okay, oops. Okay, so this is a neat little gadget. It's a USB port. On the other end is a lightning stick. So I stick that into the end of my phone and I can download all of my videos and stuff that I've taken through in the day onto a USB stick and get them off my phone. Uh, neat little gadget. I just hear someone coming in. Okay, that's about it. So that's my all the stuff that I have in my rucksack uh, for going to bed at night in a hostel. <laughs>